Let's begin with the latest updates from the Russia-Ukraine war. Russia has said that a peace settlement with Ukraine is possible if Kyiv stops fighting. This comes after Saudi Arabia held peace talks over the weekend without Moscow's participation. Around 40 countries, including Ukraine, the US, China and India, took part in a meeting held in Jeddah. Russia also added that peaceful resolution is possible if Western countries stop supplying arms to Kyiv. Exiled opponents of Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko met in Poland on Sunday. A self-declared government in exile had been set up by opposition leader Svetlana uh, Sikhanouskaya in August 2022. It has opened more than 20 alternative embassies and information centers abroad. Lukashenko has ruled Belarus since 1994, winning elections that have not been considered free or fair. Iran's Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullah met Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida during his trip to Tokyo. He also met his Japanese counterpart Yoshimara Hayashi. Reports say that Japan is urging Iran to stop supplying weapons to Russia. Niger's coup, leader, coup leaders have closed the country's airspace. This comes after they rejected an ultimatum from West African countries. The ultimatum was to reinstate ousted President Mohamed Bazoum by August 6 or risk military intervention. Meanwhile, thousands of coup supporters gathered at a stadium in Niger's capital, Niamey. A passenger train derailed in southern Pakistan, killing at least 30 people and injuring more than 80. Around 10 cars of the uh, train derailed in the country's Sindh province. Pakistan's Ministry of Railways has said that sabotage cannot be ruled out. Train services to the interior districts of Sindh have been suspended. A massive fire broke out in the endoscopy room of the All India Institute of Med Medical Sciences in India's capital, New Delhi. Six fire tenders were rushed to the spot to douse the flames. All patients in the affected rooms have been evacuated. Hospital sources say that the fire has been brought under control. No casualties have been reported. Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has said that the country will continue to assert its sovereignty and territorial rights despite challenges in the South China Sea. The statement comes after the Philippines accused China, uh, Chinese coast guards of blocking its military supply boat with a water cannon. Philippine authorities say that the incident happened on the 5th of August. China accused the Philippines of trespassing. Israeli security forces killed three alleged Palestinian militants in the occupied West Bank on Sunday. A statement said that Israeli special forces thwarted a squad from the Jenin refugee camp. It was allegedly on its way to carry out an attack. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has praised the security forces. He also said that the country will continue to act, act against those who seek Israeli lives. A major fire broke out at a plastic recycling plant in the U.S. state of New Mexico on Sunday. Municipal officials have issued a health alert in the region due to hazardous air pollutants from the smoke. The wind carried some smoke across the city of Albuquerque, leading officials to recommend limited outdoor activities. The Cambodian king, Norodom Sihamoni, has approved the nomination of Han Mane for the post of Prime Minister. Han Mane is the son of Prime Minister Han Sen. Last month, Han Sen said he would step down and hand over power to his son. This ends Han Sen's 38-year-old rule over the country. However, he will maintain high positions in legislature and the ruling party. In climate news, a 5.5 magnitude earthquake struck the eastern Chinese province of Shandong. 21 people were injured and 126 buildings collapsed as a result of the quake. Train operations have been suspended on some routes.
Meanwhile, 14 people died over the weekend in the Chinese city of Shulan. This was due to flooding caused by the uh, remnant of Typhoon Doksuri. Last week, more than 20 people died in the capital Beijing and the Hebei province. Authorities are yet to provide an overall death toll for the entire country. Meanwhile, rescue efforts are ongoing for the flood-affected areas in several other parts of China. Small businesses in Iraq's capital Baghdad are struggling to cope with the scorching summer heat wave. Temperatures are regularly rising well above 45 degrees Celsius. Shop owners have installed sprinklers to help cool down street vendors. Staff working in bakeries say they are having to work close to flaming hot ovens in temperatures that are reaching a boiling point. Firefighters battled wildfires in Italy's Sardinia. Footage released by the country's fire brigade shows firefighters battling a fire in the city of Cagliari. Around 600 residents were evacuated from the immediate area. Videos also captured burning vegetation and fences along the roads. In Portugal, firefighters struggled to bring a wildfire under control. The fires have ravaged 7,000 hectares of land. Authorities have evacuated about 100 villagers as a precaution. However, no casualties or damage to homes have been reported due to this fire so far. The illegal dumping of industrial waste is threatening the flora, fauna and livelihoods of those living near the Brazilian city of Belém. Local fishermen have said that animal waste companies have polluted a nearby river. This has killed wildlife and prevented fishing in the area. Belém is the main entry point for the Amazon rainforest. The city is due to host a summit of Amazon nations this week. Meanwhile, Brazilian environmental activists demonstrated in the city of Belém. They were protesting to reject the application by oil company Petrobras for oil exploration in the Amazon. Ecologists say they are worried about seismic exploration and oil projects in the Brazilian Amazon region. Japan has not yet decided on a specific date to begin the release of treated radioactive water. It is due to release water from the tsunami-wrecked Fukushima nuclear power plant into the ocean. Some reports say this could begin as soon as late August. Last month, Japan's nuclear regulator granted approval for the plant operator to start releasing the water. This attracted criticism from nearby countries who fear that this may contaminate food. A combination of rising temperatures and biological invasion in the Mediterranean Sea has seen local fish stocks dwindle. This has threatened the livelihood of fishermen in Lebanon. In April, a report released by the World Meteorological Organization showed that the ocean absorbs more than 90% of excess heat. This is because of greenhouse gas emissions. In the past 20 years, the rate of ocean warming has accelerated significantly. The surface temperature of the world's oceans has hit its highest level ever. This is because a climate breakdown from burning fossil fuels has caused the oceans to heat. Global average daily sea surface temperatures hit 20.96 degrees Celsius this week. It breaks the record of 90.95 degrees Celsius reached in 2016. According to reports, Around 80% of Hong Kong-based investment banking jobs at Credit Suisse will be made redundant. The job cuts could come as soon as this week. It'll spare only about 20 bankers in the team. Hong Kong accounts for Credit Suisse's biggest share of investment bankers in Asia. Reports say financial firm UBS is poised to make sweeping changes to the senior ranks of its investment banking divisions. This will affect positions globally. The changes are broad and involve several deal-making groups. This may include healthcare, consumer and retail, and equity capital markets. Under the shakeup, some Credit Suisse bankers may take on bigger roles in the combined company, and some others may leave. 
Meanwhile, some UBS bankers may also leave the firm as a result of the reshuffling. Australia has introduced new rules on tax advisors. It'll toughen penalties against the promoters of questionable tax schemes. The country will raise the minimum financial penalty for promoting tax exploitation schemes. The penalty can now go up to $510 million. The move comes in response to a scandal over the use of leaked tax documents. The Australian unit of financial firm PricewaterhouseCoopers has been implicated in the tax scandal. The software company Zoom Video Communications is asking employees to increase their presence at its offices. The company is now manda mandating staff to work from the office at least two days a week. This is for people living within an 80-kilometer radius of a Zoom office. Zoom played a pivotal role in the remote working revolution during the COVID-19 pandemic. Amazon has said it will launch a credit card offering in Brazil. This will be in partnership with Brazilian lender Banco Bradesco SA, which will manage the credit card's risk. The card will be powered by payments giant Mastercard. The launch is set for this Tuesday. Meanwhile, the US workplace safety regulator has accused e-commerce gi e giant Amazon of toxic work conditions. It has accused the company of imposing heavy production quotas and failing to provide proper medical care. The regulator has said that workers at Amazon's New Jersey warehouse suffered bodily stress. This has led to muscular disorders and neck and back injuries among Amazon workers. Reports say U.S. President Joe Biden is expected to issue his long-awaited executive order on China early next week. The order is expected to target U.S. private equity, venture capital and joint venture investments in China. It will target investments in the fields of semiconductors, quantum computing and artificial intelligence. This is to prevent U.S. capital and expertise from developing technologies that would support China's military modernization. Elon Musk has said that his social media platform X will sue and pay the legal bills of its users. This is for people who were allegedly treated unfairly by their employers for using the platform. Musk said this in a post on X, which was formerly known as Twitter. He has added that there will be no limit to funding the bills. Iraq's telecom ministry says it has blocked the Telegram messaging app. This is to preserve the integrity of personal user data, which the app has allegedly mishandled. The ministry says it had asked the app to close down some platforms. These included platforms that leaked the official state institution's data and the personal information of citizens. However, Iraq says that the company did not respond to or interact with these requests. Microsoft is shutting down its digital assistant app Cortana this month. This comes as the company puts more of its focus on modern-day artificial intelligence tools like its Bing chatbot. In the meantime, Windows users will be in a transitional period where Cortana will still be around in some form. It will continue to operate in Outlook Mobile, Teams Mobile, Microsoft Teams Display and Microsoft Teams Rooms. However, the standalone Windows app for Cortana will no longer be supported. Moving to sports, in cricket, Australia have announced their 18-member one-day International World Cup squad. Pat Cummins, the captain of the Australian team, will be off the field for six weeks due to an injury. The 30-year-old had fractured his wrist in the final Ashes Test match played recently. However, he's expected to return before Australia play South Africa in an OTI series. The West Indies beat India in the second 2020 match by two wickets in Guyana. This gives the West Indies a 2-0 lead in the five-match series. India opted to bat first and put up a score of 152 runs for seven. The West Indies chased down the target of 153 with seven balls to spare. The third T20 match will be played on Tuesday. 
Pakistan has confirmed that it will send its cricket team to India to compete in the 50-over World Cup. The arch rivals have only played against each other at neutral venues over the last decade. A statement from Pakistan's Foreign Office said, and I quote, Pakistan has consistently maintained that sports should not be mixed with politics. The India vs Pakistan World Cup match will take place on October 14th in the Indian city of Ahmedabad. In the FIFA Women's Football World Cup, the US, who were the defending champions, have been knocked out of the tournament in the round of 16. Sweden beat the US 5-4 on penalties after they were nil-all at the end of normal play. This is the earliest exit ever for the US women's football team at a major tournament. The Netherlands have qualified for the quarterfinals at the FIFA Women's World Cup after a 2-0 win over South Africa. Jill Rood and Lynette Berenstein scored a goal in each half. The Dutch will now face Spain on August 10th. American football club Inter Miami defeated FC Dallas to reach the quarterfinals of the League's Cup. FC Dallas were leading the match 4-2 with just 10 minutes to go. Lionel Messi scored two goals, including an equaliser to draw the game 4-all in the 85th minute. The game was then sent to penalties, where Inter Miami clinched a 5-3 win against Dallas. English Premier League club Arsenal beat Manchester City in the Community Shield 2023 on Sunday. The Gunners lifted the Community Shield after a 4-1 win in a penalty shootout. During regular play, Cole Palmer gave Man City a lead with his 78th-minute goal, but Leandro Trossard's goal in the 11th, 11th minute of second-half stoppage time sent the game to penalties. According to reports, French striker Kylian Mbappe will be barred from training with Paris Saint-Germain's main squad. Mbappe has been in a contract dispute with PSG and has said he will not renew it upon expiry. PSG believe that the forward has agreed to a free transfer deal with Real Madrid. Last month, PSG had given Saudi club Al-Hilal permission to speak to Mbappe, but he refused to meet them. American tennis player Coco Gauff won the Washington Open. Goff defeated Greece's Maria Sakkari 6-2, 6-3 to win the fourth WTA Tour singles title of her career. The 19-year-old Goff is the youngest women's champion of the Washington Open. In gymnastics, four-time Olympic gold medalist Simone Biles won the US Classic. This was her first competitive gymnastics event since 2021. The 26-year-old American gymnast had stepped away from the sport to focus on her mental health. In entertainment news, the Barbie movie has earned over $1 billion in global ticket sales. It has become the first movie directed by a woman to reach this milestone. The movie made a $1 billion in just over two weeks of its debut. The film, starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling in the lead roles of Barbie and Ken, made $53 million in North America this weekend. The Writers Guild of America has introduced new demands that could extend the Hollywood strike further. The demands include a healthcare benefit extension. It would give striking writers more time to qualify for health coverage that they may lose because of a lack of earnings. Actor Zachary Levy has issued a statement to clarify his remarks on the ongoing Hollywood writers and actors strike. A video of him calling the strike dumb went viral. In a new statement, the actor said that he fully supports his union and the words he said were taken out of context. Levy added that he is an outspoken critic of the exploitative system that artists are subject to. Model Bella Hadid has issued a health update amid her battle with Lyme disease. She thanked her mother Yolanda Hadid for keeping track of her medical records and sticking by her. Yolanda Hadid herself opened up about her battle with Lyme disease many times. She was diagnosed with the disease in 2012 when she was filming Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. 
director Louis Leterrier has opened up about scrapped plans to make a sequel to the 2008 film The Incredible Hulk. Leterrier said that the Hulk is a complex character within the Marvel Universe. He added, and I quote, you want the primeval Hulk, the Rage Hulk, and then when you go Grey Hulk and Smart Hulk, you get a little bit more kiddish with it. Actor Adam Brody has said he came close to landing a role in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was almost taken on board to play the character of Peter Quill in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This was before actor Chris Pratt was cast for the role. Brody added that Pratt was bigger, stronger, and he really dug it. Musician Tory Lanez is set to be sentenced for shooting rapper Megan Thee Stallion in 2020. Lanes was found guilty of three felonies in December 2022. The shooting incident left Megan the Stallion wounded in her feet. Prosecutors have called for Lanes to be sentenced to 13 years in prison. Actor Jonathan Majors' domestic violence trial has been postponed until sept September 6th. The 33-year-old actor recently appeared in court for the beginning of his trial. He's been accused of misdemeanors, including assault. He's likely to face a sentence for up to a year if convicted. The actor's attorney said he was unjustly arrested and suffered at the hands of the accuser. Actor Jamie Foxx has apologized for a social media post that drew criticism over anti-Semitism. The controversial post was deleted after social media users said it echoed hateful beliefs against the Jewish community. While apologizing, Fox said that he now knows his choice of words caused offense and it was not his intention. Late actor Angus Cloud's mother, Lisa Cloud, has shed light on the final moments before the actor's sudden death. In a Facebook post, she said, My son was in deep grief about his father's untimely death, but his last day was a joyful one. Lisa Cloud insisted that the actor did not die by suicide. This comes after reports that she informed authorities about a possible overdose.